he did a good job. I'm not gonna lie, it took me a minute. Like everybody else, cause I think Boondock came out like when I was in high school, and everybody was watching it, but I resisted because me, I'm just not a. Oh, everybody's doing it. Let me hop on. What everybody's doing it. I got to in all situations and all things. I always have to sniff out the energy first. So. We was in. We was at somebody's dorm and it was playing. And that's kind of when I got to see what everybody was talking about when it comes to boondocks. But I didn't really decide to give it a try until about maybe two to three years after that. I think that that was old. I had had my daughter. So it was 2010 at that time. 2010. And that's when we started watching. Well, my husband had already watched it. I had just started watching it. But then when I watched it, I was like, hmm, this is actually well written. It has some dark humor in it. It has a lot of troops in it. A lot of conversations that need to be had. And definitely a lot of conversations in boondocks that need to have between that need to be had in the black community. As well as outside of the black community. It touched on everything from the coons to uh, cultural appropriation, um, the ghetto versus the suburbs, um, ownership versus um, renting and all kinds of stuff. The elderly, even generational, it uh, it touched on the different aspects of the generation, which is another conversation I think that we should dive into a little bit more because a lot of things are generational. Every generation has its own mindset. Like, baby boomers who are still alive, although a lot of baby boomers now are in a stage where they're tr- transitioning, If they haven't transitioned already. So Gen X is the next elders up. And then millennials, we're we're right behind them. And then Gen... um, So we're the parents now in this time. And then Gen Z is behind us. And then my children, their generation is behind them. Whatever that generation is. And we all think differently because of what we had during our time periods so yeah it's a good show though it's really nice a lot (laughs) huh he or she nothing nothing move a lot of ways and you know what's funny though? You go ahead, like. Oh. You ain't gotta stand here. Um. When you're born into something, let me. When you're born into something, as we are all born into these habits that we have, you're not aware. Like there are some things, like even when I'm talking to my husband. That come out in conversation that I didn't realize that was that I that was um that I was conditioned to feel or to believe or to do due to my childhood. And it doesn't feel good too when you realize the people that you love. When you start looking at your family, not as family but as human beings who make mistakes. And who are not right all the time. It is a whole different shock of awareness. Because though they may think that, like I was saying, the different the different generations. And how those generations did. They had limited knowledge and they had limited technology and information and stuff. Where like now we have so much thrown at us at one time. It's impossible for you to not know things because you can just simply Google it or look it up. 
But we are all a product of our childhoods, our workplaces that we've been in, the things that the people we've been around, the things we've read, the things we've seen, the things we've heard. And we don't realize how a lot of that, even when we don't intend to do certain things or say certain things, how it comes out in our actions. Our subconscious is one of the most powerful. It's even more powerful than the conscious mind because we operate out of our subconscious so much. We don't even think about it when things happen. Or a lot of things we don't think about it. We just do it out of habit, out of conditioning, out of normalcy, tradition, what we think we know due to our experiences. And it can be easy. It can be easy not to see what we do until somebody else points out what we're doing. And then most of the time, we as human beings are pushing back on people who are calling us out, on people that are holding us accountable because we fear being wrong. We fear change. We fear, we, we allow fear to drive us. And make us feel lesser than or smaller than or we hate as humans feeling inferior. We're taught that we're not supposed to make mistakes. We're taught that we're supposed to be good people. So it can be hard. It can be easy to not see the things that we are doing to other people. And even to ourselves most of all. So it's so many things. It's so many things. And Twitter, Twitter, let me tell you, they don't hold back over there. So anything you want to know, like personally, you can literally type in the search bar of Twitter, microaggressions, and just read those stories from people. Read the experiences from people. Um, you can type in uh, cultural appropriation. You can type in, um, what's another thing? diversity and inclusion you can type in these things on twitter and just we have to get comfortable with hearing other people's stories outside of our own and especially those stories that have always been put on the forefront and centered and have always it's time for some of that to take a back seat and be open like we here in america we are they it, by design we are so closed off to so many things that we think other types of food is funny looking or it looks disgusting. And it very well may be a very nutritious and healthier meal than what we eat here. We eat hot dogs. There's nothing healthy about hot dogs. There's nothing healthy, to be honest, about like even hamburgers and stuff. Like we consume so much grease, so much starch, so much flour, so much um, sugar. We consume all of this stuff and then look down on other people and we've gotten and you know what's the scary part about it even we have we're not encouraged in the human connection we fear connecting outside of ourselves and with people who don't look like us, who don't think like us, who don't act like us, that don't come from the same background. We have been conditioned to fear people, even if they live down the street from us because, oh, that person may be different or, oh, that person has a different mindset. I can't be around that person. I can't hang with that person. And true, there are times when your energy and somebody else's energy just does not match and it may not be a good fit and y'all truly cannot share a space or y'all can share a space but y'all have an understanding that y'all are just not each other's vibe you know there are cases like that but we are discouraged from the human connection emotional connection all of the things that connect us that give us life that allow us that's why and if anybody is even catching on like our generations compared to the some other generations, we're not living as long. Like, I have classmates right now in my 30s 
that I can count beyond one hand that have passed. And I don't mean from like shooting each other. I don't mean from like violence or anything. Health problems. Majority of them, it was health problems. And we're so busy centering ourselves in a lot of cases and not thinking beyond our mindsets and being mindful and practicing that that we're missing so much because it's like somebody told me in talking to other people you learn so much and that person may be the key to something that can help prolong your life or help you for help you feel more fulfilled or just give you a boost of energy or you know you just never know but there are a lot of things that i could list personally and I, I I would have to say, if I have to be honest and think of something off the top of my head, it's the, the ability to dismiss people and ignore them. That is definitely a privilege. That is a privilege that not a lot of people get. There are some people who are forced to be mindful at all times. Hey, boo. There are some people who are forced to be mindful at all times that are thinking about other people at all times. It is a privilege to be able to ignore people, to be able to shut yourself off from the world and just live your life the way that you're used to living without having to think outside of yourself or make yourself uncomfortable in certain ways. Versus there are some people, as soon as they hit the door, or go in a space, they have to think about everything surrounding them and everybody surrounding them. And I see it all the time. People will look off and act like people are not standing right there or be they'll talk to certain people and like say if it's me, you and another person, they'll ignore that I'm there and talk to the other person making direct contact eye contact the entire time. And then when I try to insert or add to the conversation or insert my thoughts and all of that totally dismiss it go back to talking to that person and act like i'm not there that has happened that's off a personal experience that's one thing that i can say another is um what could be looked at as favoritism because like i say and i always say not all skin folks is kin folks, and that even go for white people. There are some people that you choose based upon your familiarity. I think I said that right. Familiarity. <laughs> Familiar. Familiarity. And because of that, that's what you know. That's what you've grown up around. That's what you feel safe with. And that's not always the best option. That's not always the best option. It's not always the best option to you got you have to decipher energy. And that's where a lot of people are losing. Uh and a lot of people are going a lot of people have lost and a lot of people are losing and will lose. I have talked to a lot. I've been talking <clears throat> all my life I've talked to baby boomers. I love baby boomers. I love 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 them. What I love about them is that as strong as they may come off because sometimes i have to tell them hey look that's not appropriate or you know whatever they're very strong um in conversation they they're very blunt they don't sugarcoat they shoot it straight even if it's offensive they are straight shooters for the most part and i've come across baby boomers who regretted who they were in their youth. And these these were white people that regret it. And you can tell because they'll try to overextend themselves. You can know you can tell when the guilty the guilty present themselves or people who feel some type of guilt. And this isn't just for like slavery or Jim Crow or whatever. Although though these are pieces to the puzzle. But we all play our individual parts and and some people looking back on the past and analyzing what they've done personally, they realize that, dang, I didn't realize that what I was doing was racist. 
or and, and I really messed over that girl. I really messed over that guy. I really I was operating out of ignorance and I feel bad about that. That's why a lot of people don't want to talk about things. That's why a lot of people don't want to go there because they know in some way they played a part in making somebody's life miserable. And when you and when you hold one accountable, you have to hold everybody accountable. And when when you shine a light like that, the light shines on everybody. And some people just don't want to have to face um, face things. Some people are not ready. There are some people that are just not ready to face the part the parts that they played in their lives. And it is a privilege to hold everybody accountable, but self. While forcing everybody else to be accountable. To be... In an oblivious state of mind. To be... Um, I'm reaching for something. I don't know if I'm going to grab it. I'm trying to... I'm trying to think. I guess just not be mindful. And... Self-serving. And a lot of people... Don't realize what they're doing. They're just doing things out of habit because they saw teaching is not just somebody sitting down or sitting down and telling you things. Teaching is not just uh, teaching and learning. It's not just sitting in a classroom with a textbook. Although, because we are conditioned to see these things and these images and these type of settings, that's what we associate that with. That's what we make familiar Teaching and learning is also going into the grocery store and seeing certain people do things a certain way. And now you've been enlightened about it. Like, if you're not used to saying excuse me or doing a kind gesture, you're not used to that. And somebody does that. You come, you, you've been enlightened. You've been inspired. And we just have to normalize. We have to normalize conversation. We have to normalize hearing people. Even when it's hard to hear. Even when it's not. I'm willing. Even on my page. I'm willing to hear people that don't think like me. And there are many times I had to stop myself. (laughs) From hitting the block button. Because somebody disagreed. But I had to hold myself accountable. In that. And say. Well, do you just not disagree or is this person being disrespectful? Because I only block people who are disrespectful. That's it. People who are just downright like nasty. People who are just trying to be a smart ass and trying to be an agitator. I don't block people for disagreeing with me. That's childish. You know, that's not what we're here to do. I can't sit here and have a platform where I talk about any and everything and silence everybody else. My page is my page. Yes, I run it. But... I also welcome other points of view. And my point of view isn't the only point of view that matters. I've had a lot of people educate in the comments and um, drop insights that helped other people who were just looking. When you base your expectation on what is seen, you blind yourself to possibilities of a new reality. Yep. And we have been so conditioned to cater to and to nurtured the spirit of fear that when um new things present itself we it's like a culture shock it's like a shock an emotional shock even because we're we're we are discouraged from being human we are really discouraged from being human life doesn't have to be as hard as it is. People make it hard. People truly make it hard. Life does not have to be hard. There are people who make it harder for others. So that they can be greedy. So that they can have abundance. While everybody dreams about abundance. And a good life. While they're out there living it. And I think apps like TikTok. Even Instagram. 
And I noticed that a lot of platforms are starting to kind of follow the lead of TikTok. And there are more conversations that are happening. There are more people being enlightened. And a lot of people that are realizing that it's like I had one of my followers on Pinterest because I post on Pinterest too. And she said, oh my gosh, now I feel, I feel bad for being white. And I'm like, baby, I don't need you to feel bad for being white. I don't need you to feel guilty for being white. You were born how you were born. You had no choice in choosing your skin color. You had no choice in choosing how you were raised. The only choice you have is in realizing, making yourself self-aware and making yourself aware of others and choosing to do better and be better than your surroundings, the people of the past, and the people that you currently know. Your growth is the responsibility. That is the thing. It is not the guilt because guilt guilt is self-serving. Guilt doesn't serve other people. Your guilt, your shame, it doesn't serve other people. That does nothing for other people who are hurting in this world. Your guilt, your shame is your own. It is your responsibility. It is your process to sit through. It is something that you have to deconstruct and work through yourself. However, you have to come out of that. You have to come out of guilt, shame, and you have to, hey, hey, Miss Catherine, um, you have to come out of your guilt, your shame, so that you can serve other people. Because when you're wallowing in guilt and shame, you're still centering yourself. And that's not what people need others to do. People need others to be strong. To be self-aware, to be, to practice self-care, be open to a new mindset, unlearn, and be willing to learn again. And in unlearning, relearning, put it into action. We in the world need strong people. We need strong mindsets. We need people who know who they are, who are not ashamed of who they are, but are willing to be better than the cards that were dealt to them. Guilt and shame serve no one. It serves self because it makes you feel a certain way. The person in front of me could be guilty and feel shameful, but it still does nothing for me at the end of the day, the day if I'm in pain. You can't focus enough to help me if you're wallowing in guilt shame misery and your own emotional pain you are no good to no one your cup is not filled so you damn sure can't feel mine what about that two dollars mm -hmm. i might have it in my purse or get it out of daddy wallet okay i'm gonna do it on your purse okay But yeah, we, there's a lot. The list is very long. And we're constantly, every single day, I don't care how young you are, how old you are. We are never going to stop learning. We're never going to stop making mistakes. But we have to be open and willing. We have to be open to correction and be willing to be corrected. We have to learn how to have a conversation and like I've noticed this word debate and argument being thrown around on social media so much. We don't always have to debate. We don't always have to argue. We don't. And not everything is an argument. Not every conversation. Just because I'm put, inserting a thought, that doesn't mean that I'm arguing with you. That doesn't mean that I want to battle you. Every, not everything is a battle. We have to get out of this war mindset. America was founded on war, and the whole culture is war. So everybody thinks that everything is a battle. Whether it be physical or spiritual, 
Everybody's looking for a fight. We don't always have to fight. We can coexist and we can compromise and it needs to be normalized. And the only people that don't want us to do that are those who benefit off of other people's pain. And that benefit from people always having drama, stress on their lives. I can't say the word. <laughs> I want them to come alive off. It's getting kind of juicy. Huh? Can you do it? Take a well, give me a second, okay? Okay. I'm, a, I'm about to get off in a few minutes. Oh, mama, I'm about to fix your strength thing. But stress affects the immune system. It affects our mindsets. It affects how we operate on a day-to-day basis. And there's some people who want us to wallow in stress and frustration and anger and pain. Because when we are distracted by all that, because all that is is a distraction. When you're in pain, if like today, my tooth was hurting so bad. I was no help to nobody. I wasn't thinking about anybody. I could give two shits what somebody was doing down the street or if somebody else was hurting because I was in pain. My tooth was hurting. I was screaming today. That's how bad the pain was. And when you're like that and when you're stressed and when you're depressed and when you you are, you cannot be of service to anybody. And people want us to operate. Certain people want us to operate in that spirit, in that type of energy, in those type of environments. And we have to normalize having a good life and having a good time. We deserve that. We don't deserve to be born, in, first of all, into a world we didn't even ask to come into. We didn't ask to be here. And hell, some of us are wondering why. Like, why? Why? But, <laughs> but we're here. We can't do nothing about it now but live. And while we're here, we deserve to have a good life. I'm going to say it forever and ever and ever. We deserve to have a good life. We deserve to not be stressed to unalive. I'm trying to watch my words. <laughs> we don't we don't deserve that. We deserve better. No matter what people say. And there are people before us who had to normalize stress and had to normalize um all of these things that we have now, as our, as we've grown wiser, as we are more developed, we have had to learn to unlearn. And it is definitely a shock. It is a shock when you stop looking at your parents as through the lens of just your parents and your family members through the lens of just your family members when you and your friends. As just the lens of your friends and you take the emotions out of it and you start looking at them like human beings. The flawed human beings that they are, that don't know everything, that are unaware that they are operating in chaotic energy, that are unaware that they have work to do, generational work that they left on the table and that they're not taking control of and doing That is a shock like no other. And in some cases, it hurts. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. Y'all, I did not mean to get on here. Hold on, not not the sharp end. I did not mean to get on here preaching. I was supposed to be sewing. We was listening to music. And y'all baited me in. (laughs) But yeah. For real, like... We we all got a lot of... Um, we're going to always be unlearning for the rest of our lives. We're all, and we're always going to be learning. And the more we come in contact with... We need to lo- normalize talking to and coming in contact with people who are different from us. Who don't look like us. Who don't think like us. Who don't act like us. And stop thinking everything is so weird or things are... You know, judging everything that we don't understand. And learn that even in our understanding, we still... uh, And learn that even in our lack of understanding, we still need to have respect. Whether we agree or disagree. Not everything has to be disrespected. And not everything has to be an argument or a war. 
we can have conversations and we can agree to disagree we it doesn't always have to be beef or <clears throat> animosity it doesn't always have to be that but there there are a lot of things a lot of energy that um people operate in that they're unaware of but you'll never know until somebody corrects you but uh, there are some people who aren't comfortable correcting others because there's always some type of retaliation or get back like oh i have to that person said something i didn't like now i have to get them back now i have to exclude them from this and that now i have to be petty it's always petty energy that's met with even respectful dialogue or respectful correction and we have to unlearn that. We have to learn to be better, to communicate, to stop acting like children. <laughs> I know some children that act better than adults. Hell. <laughs> but all right, y'all, my daughter is going to come up in here another, in about another good five minutes asking me for $2 so she can get some from the snack stand tomorrow. So let me... If I can, I can hear her coming. So, I'm going to talk to y'all later. This was a good talk. If y'all have any questions or anything y'all want me to talk about, feel free to DM me. Feel free to uh, write it under a post. Uh, no problem. And I have been making it a habit, uh, just so y'all know. So, if y'all be like, oh, I want to watch the replay. Because I don't think on here you can watch the replay. Like, I can watch the replay, but y'all can't. I upload these lives to my YouTube. You can click the link in my bio. It's like a Instagram link, I think. The Instagram link is going to give you my Instagram and my YouTube. So I will be uploading this live to my YouTube so that you can watch it back. All right, y'all. Have a good night.